All right, welcome back. This is uh, hopefully a really short video. I had a little bit of a request to put some enemies in. So um, uh, rather than finish the series without the enemies, just thought I'd quickly put the enemy in if you hadn't managed to do this. So in this video, we're just going to make uh, a very, very simple enemy. This is a sprite that I drew and we get it working as an enemy so that when you manage to touch it, you respawn. So let's get started making this simple enemy. So I've already made the sprite um, for my enemy and this is just an, an, another uh, Piskel sprite that I made. Um, but what we're going to do is set it up as an Area 2D. So um, the Area 2D is an absolutely awesome node that you can use for a whole lot of things. If you look uh, to create a new Area 2D on your game and you just hover over, this is specifically designed to uh, detect collisions um, with objects inside of this uh, inside of your game. So I'm going to just create that Area 2D and I'm going to call it Enemy. Um, all it needs is, you can see it's complaining again, so we're just going to add in the collision shape that we need and the sprite that we need. So I'm just going to add the sprite in first so that I can match the collision shape up and just get my new spiky dude sprite. Um, you can use any sprite that you like. You can even use the icon.svg. If you want to stop the video, just go make a, a simple enemy. You're welcome to go do that or a simple um, a simple spike or something like that. You're welcome to just go do that now and then come back when you're finished. I've got my sprite in there and um, I also need need to add the collision shape too. So I'm just going to add the basic, um, I think I'll just add a basic rectangle shape for that. Now, by default, they're always set up here. And that's not a bad thing because um, what we're going to do is we're going to make this into a prefab so we can use it anywhere we like on the scene. So I'm just going to, um, just going to make this shape match up a little bit. So just drag in the collision shape to approximate the shape of my enemy. And that's close enough. And I'm just going to save this. And we're just going to turn this into a prefab. So I've got my prefabs folder highlighted here. I'm just going to right click on this. And I'm just going to say uh, save branch as scene. And just make sure that it's going into the prefabs folder. And it's called enemy.tscn. Um, now I can delete this specific enemy from my scene. And I can use this prefabs folder to add enemies on as many times as I like. So in the, inside this prefabs folder, I've got this enemy.tscn and I can just drag and drop them as many times as I like onto my scene and they should all behave exactly the same way. All right, we're going to need to make the behaviors now. So this, um, this enemy, you can see, I'm just going to give myself one on the scene before I complicate things too much. So I've just got my one enemy on a scene. Now in order to uh, change the top level prefab, we just need to click on this scene folder right here. And I do need you to make sure that you do that so that you're not just changing an instance of one on the scene, but you're actually changing any instance that is uh, one of those prefabs. So we've got this enemy um, that contains a sprite in the collision shape. And if I click on this enemy and we move across to the node tab, um, next to the inspector, you'll see that there's a bunch of signals that this will automatically um, emit when different things happen. The main ones that you're going to use most of the time is if another area enters this area, you uh, this signal will be emitted. And if another body enters this area, this body entered will be emitted. There's obviously body exited as well if you need it, and there's some other ones that I tend not to use. The most common one, as I mentioned before, is this body entered one. The body entered um, signal just, uh, as you can see from the help here, just happens when another body enters it. And the body happens to be, um, in most cases, the player, because the player itself is, in fact, a... Um, the player, top level player, is in fact a character body, so it would emit a signal if the the enemy would emit a signal when the character body goes into it. To hook this up, um, I'm going to use this method here. So um, I'm going to create a script on this top level enemy here, so that um, so that we can uh, have the signal hooked up so to every single individual one rather than trying to hook up all enemies to a different place like maybe the game or the player. So we're just going to attach a script right now um, by default 
because my player, uh, my enemy is called enemy, it will call it enemy.gd. It's going to put the script in prefabs and I'd like to be organized. So I'm just going to drop out and go into the scripts folder and make sure that the script goes into the, um, into the scripts folder to keep them all organized. Now that we have a script on it, we actually don't need anything um, in this script other than this extends area 2D. Um, if we go back to the enemy here and we hook up this body entered uh, signal, we can hook it straight up to the one that it's, it's connecting from. So you can see it says this connecting from because we have a script on it. Now it should connect up automatically. It's also given it a default receiver method, this on body entered. So we'll click connect. Now this is really cool. Um, what we're going to do is, as always, we're just going to test to make sure that this actually works. Um, so I'm going to just do a simple print statement um, and save that print statement. Now one of the key things here about signals is just make sure that you see this little green door here. Um, that means that there, this is a connected signal, so that this piece of code is connected to a, an actual signal. And you can see the signals in this um, in the node inspector here where you can look at body entered. When you double click this too, it should take you to the connected signal if you happen to not know if it's connected to the right thing and you need to debug. So if I go back to the main game here, um, just look at that in 2D. So we have an enemy on my scene and this is the enemy prefab scene that we were working on. And what we should see when I run this, if I look down in the console is my little character, when I go in, um, you'll see that the ouch signal, the ouch print was, um, was activated so I know that it's actually working and every time this player goes in we know that it works. So that's a great way to test whether this is actually working or not. Now we need to just respawn the player instead of just printing out ouch. Respawning the player because of the player script that we wrote earlier it's actually slightly easier than anyone thinks. So if I just go to this um, this player object right here and we look at the look at the script we already have this start position. Um, this start position is what we want to actually go to when the player actually um, needs to be respawned. We did it earlier on down here um, in one of the previous videos where we have our respawn that's when the position dot y is greater than 900. And what we can do is we can make ourselves a little bit more um, flexible by creating a new function for that. So I'll just make this a bit bigger. So we can see a bit better and we're just going to create a new function and just we're going to call this respawn and um, the respawn doesn't need anything other than the ability to just set the position back to the start position so we'll just say position equals start position um, and now um, in this piece of code right here we can actually call our respawn function instead of um, instead of what we did earlier. So we just call, if I can spell this correctly anyway, we can call respawn and it will just set this. Why it's cool though is because we can call this from anywhere um, and so even an enemy, um, if it knows that it's got the player, it can respawn the player. Uh, the way that is going to work is inside of my enemy, we have this enemy script right here. Now when the on body entered, um, it passes in the uh, body of the object that entered it. So remember that this is on the enemy. So um, the just to test this, what we can actually do is we can print um, body dot name, and that will give us um, this body. And every uh, node two D has a name. So if we say body dot name, it should print out the name. Now in theory, it should just print out the word player. So if I run this, you see there's nothing down here in the um, oops, in the console. But when I run over this, it does actually print out player. Now we could uh, just simply call body dot respawn. But there's one thing I just wanted to check before we do that. So sometimes what happens inside the game is the enemy may be um, touching something. So if we see right here, this enemy is already touching the tiles. So if I run this, what I'll probably see first is that I see tile map has appeared. Um, that means that this enemy was actually touching the tile map, which is a bad thing if we wanted to respawn the player because the enemy is touching the tile map, not the player. There's um, So we need to make sure that we check for the the object that is touching the 
the um, enemy before we do respawn it and make sure that it is the player. So it's not a difficult piece of code. Um, what we do is we just do a very, very simple um, if statement. So we just say if body dot name is equal to and then the name of our player um, inside of quote marks. Now, I called mine player. Just make sure that yours is exactly the same as mine or make sure that you've ensure that this uh, this string here is the actual name of your player. Mine's is player with a lowercase p. If I did this with an uppercase p, it wouldn't work. So um, if body.name equals player, because that's the name of my player, I'm going to say body, because I know it's the player, dot respawn. Uh, again, I'm having some trouble with my spelling, but body.respawn. So what that'll do is, because I know this is the player, I know that the, the player body has a script on it that has a respawn function and GD script smart enough to know it's just going to try and run that and it should work. So in theory now, if I run this game, I should be able to walk over the spiky thing and I'll respawn back to the start position.